Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I posted a tutorial or a video for a few weeks, but I recently just got back from the UK and I've been grinding really hard to get this UK video done for you guys to see. So if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gus Snow. And now let's get into tutorial number 14. So the topic that I'm going to be showing you all today is a very important topic. It is called sound design. It's a very important tool that you should apply to every single one of your videos that you create. Because the first thing when a viewer is watching your video, your brain processes sound before visuals. So without audio, the video will be horrible. So I'm going to take you guys through the steps of how I edit my sound bites, the effects that I apply to them, and every step that I take from looking at the visuals to adding audio effects and transitional audio effects to them. So now let's get into Premiere so I can show you guys how I do my sound design for my videos. Okay, so now that we're in Premiere Pro, I'm going to be showing you guys how I sound design my UK video, the intro of it. And what I do in the intro is will be carried on throughout the rest of the video. So I'm going to be showing you guys the steps on how I added sound effects, the way I cut it, and how I layered my sound effects to make the intro. So real quick, let's start with the first sound bite that I recorded with the intro shot straight from the camera. So I shot this with my 1DX and this is the sound bite right here, these three blue little clips. So what I did when I dragged it into Premiere Pro, you're going to see at the beginning I'm not in the frame, but I'm walking into the frame as you go further into the shot. So right here where the first cut is for the sound bite, I want to make it sound like I'm coming from another room. So right here, I added a constant gain at the beginning. So basically what a constant gain is, is kind of a fade in and a fade out if you put it at the beginning and at the end of the clip. And when you put it in the middle where there's a cut right here, what it does, it, it fades in to the next audio clip. So say you have a low pass effect or like right here, I have a studio reverb, which is kind of adding an echo effect to the sound clip. So as it's the constant gain is right here, as it's getting closer right here into the next clip, it's fading out into the other clip, kind of blending those two from the effect to normal. So that's basically what constant gain is, is a fade in and a fade out. So I always add that at the beginning and end of my sound bites. So let's go back to right here where the clip is. So I have my constant gain right here and then I cut it where I want to just have the effect in this one little clip for that length. So what you do, you go into effects right here and type in studio reverb and then you drag it onto the clip. I already have it here. So then you're going to see it right here in the effects control and you're going to see edit. Then you're going to want to click edit and you're going to see presets right here. You're going to want to click that and press great hall. And then after that, it's not done yet. You have to come down to the output level and then here is where you adjust the echoness. So in the dry and the wet. So you can, the more you drag to the left and the more you drag to the right, the more of an echo effect you get. You don't want to overdo it as well because it's not going to sound well, but preferably you can do it as much as you want. Normally I stay in between 20 and 40 and then 60 and 80 and that sounds perfect to me. So then after that you just press X and that is applied to the clip then. So as you see right here, it's... See how it kind of is an echo effect and then it blends into it without it. That's what I'm talking about, the constant gain. It helps with that. And then you can hear the effect as well. Another thing that I forgot to tell you guys is when I'm editing my sound, I like to turn off the soundtracks. So if you want to do that, you come over here to the left where the audio layer is and you just press M for me. Because a lot of the times the, uh, the song takes up the sound and I can't hear it as well. So I like to mute that to really listen to the sound by itself. So after that, then here I added no effects here. I just raised the volume a little bit. I just raised it from two to six, just over time a little bit. And then again, I put constant gain here to fade it out into okay. that. And then right here, as you see, I'm throwing that cloth into the frame. That is perfect to add a whoosh. It's a transitional sound. And whenever you're doing video, you always have to have a transitional sound or something whenever you speed ramp or for 
this okay. part right here it's going into the frame being thrown it just it, it adds a little bit more of a dramatic effect so let's go down a little bit and here i'm going to be showing you guys layer by layer what each one is so reception as you hear it's just people talking and everything it's a sound effect that i wanted to use because i'm talking about going into the airport so kind of adding an ambient sound of the airport i'm not quite in it yet but since i'm talking about it i thought it would be a really good way to add kind of an atmospheric sound and then i just added the constant gain no real sound effects to it just the fade in and a fade out and then here i added a little bit of kind of an undertone riser of of feelings it's kind of just adds kind of a just say it rises so when it keeps going through as you hear right there it just it adds another kind of atmospheric effect to it as well so then right here i added a, a gentle wind since we're in the woods of kind of another ambient sound since we're outside it's fog there was a little bit of wind at that time when i was filming but i didn't capture it because i was filming in slow motion and again i added a constant gain at the beginning and the end but here i added a sound effect called surround reverb and again, when you go into effects, you just type in surround reverb, click and drag and put it onto the clip. So then after that, you're going to see it in effect controls and you want to click edit and this will pop up. So when I'm in surround reverb, you go to presets once again and you select somewhere not here. So basically with that and then that's it. You don't need to do anything else. You just put that there and exit out of it. So what that effect does is basically it kind of adds a sound is more in the background is what you want, especially with like wind or waves or any sound effects with birds or something that you hear in the background when you're outside. That's what surround reverb does. So and then that's basically it. What I did with that sound bite. And then after here, I added kind of here's a whoosh effect for the cloth. So here again, I added a studio reverb to kind of get an echoey, a little bit kind of feel with that whoosh and then a surround reverb. So it's kind of in the background, so it's not too loud or too much in front. And then I kind of also what I like to do with my whooshes at times, I like to change the speed of it. So I'll click R and go to the end of the clip and drag and extend it to slow it down. And that's basically what I, that's it. What I did for that whoosh, and then over here I added a little bit of a drop whoosh with for the title, because as it's coming towards you and fading away, it's kind of like another good place to add a whoosh. So whenever I'm editing or doing things like that, I look for a little kind of transitional ways I could add sound to make it more immersive. And then also here below the surface, just another riser that I extended throughout the whole clip up until this part right here. And that's basically what I did for the beginning right there. So now let's get more over here to where I'm doing the transition of putting the camera together. And as you hear, you can hear the background really well with the ambient sounds, the wind, the animals. That's really where surround reverb comes in very well. So let's go over here to the recorded sound that I recorded with my camera with me putting down the backpack. Again, I didn't put anything here because I really wanted this sound to be nice and loud and prominent for you guys to hear. All I added was a constant gain for a fade in and a fade off for each sound bite to blend perfect blend well together not where it's like a harsh cut because a lot of times if you don't put a constant gain it's a harsh cut and that doesn't sound well well constant gain it, it really helps with that so that's all i did to those sound bites is just added that except actually here for the zipper sound effect it was a little bit too loud and i kind of wanted to put it a little bit lower and more in the background so i added a surround reverb with somewhere not here again and whenever I use surround reverb, that's basically the only preset I like to use. And then let's go down over here to where we start having this in camera effect that I did. So as you see right here, I'm starting to or you're starting to see in the playback on the screen right there where I masked it out. 
and you're gonna see another scene coming in. So as you see right here, when I'm going in through the camera, I add a whoosh effect because I am going through the camera. It's another transition, another transitional sound effect. So that's another thing you gotta look for. Again, a transitional sound to make that effect way more or way better. And then I start going into this scene and you see right here, it looks like a subway. So what you have to think of, okay, let me put a subway sound effect. So right here, I have this sound effect right here, which is a New York City subway station. And I added a surround reverb to it. And then I lowered it quite a bit because it was very loud to sound bite. And then I added the constant gain. And again, surround reverb, I put somewhere not here. And let's listen to it. See, again, that helps set the mood and the kind of establishing where the shot is being taken. Sorry about that. And then right here, as I'm, the camera's getting closer and closer to the screen and closer towards me and passing by me, again, I add another whoosh for a transitional sound. Because also we're going through the screen that I masked out into another shot, into a drone shot right there. And right here, I didn't really add much of a sound effect for this. All I added was right here, kind of a drop whoosh, which is like a lengthened whoosh, slowed down. I just added a surround reverb and a studio reverb to it because it was I didn't want it to be too loud. I wanted it to be a little bit echoey and in the background again. So more of a subtle kind of sound effect. And then right here, I just have my, I have a couple wind sound effects layers right here. It wasn't too windy that day, so I kind of want to make it match. And there was clouds rolling in. Just a little bit background sound. Okay, so right here, I layered a few sounds. Uh, waves, wind, and seagulls. Because we're on a cliff, it's windy. There's a lighthouse over there, so a little bit of a bell effect. And then, you know, seagulls are always by the ocean and beach. So right here. Below the surface, I added another riser right there. And here, city and seagull. So I added sur uh, just a surround reverb once again for it to be in the background and lowered the volume a little bit. And didn't want it to be too loud. And I just have this clip of the wind going all the way through here because I have a few drone shots. So I just wanted that to play throughout those clips. And right here, just a little bit of a, this is like a little bit of a smaller whoosh right here for this. And whenever you're doing transitional sounds, what I like to do, I just don't put one whoosh at a time or a riser or something. Sometimes I like to layer multiple ones. It just kind of like adds layers to that transitional sound, which I like to do. A lot of people just put one, but I like to put multiple layers of those and sometimes lower some add a different effect, like the studio reverb to one, a low pass to one or just lengthen it and slow it down a little bit and lower the volume. I, I like to play around like that with it. And then right there. So here with the bell, I kind of, I did what I did at the beginning. I cut it up and I added effect at the beginning and then I did a constant gain in the middle to fade it out of that effect. So here at the beginning of this with the bells, as you hear, I added a low pass effect to kind of make it a little bit muffled at the beginning. And then as it's getting closer with the drone shot, you can hear it a little bit louder. And then I also, I lowered the volume on it a, quite a bit, minus five, because I didn't want it to be too loud. And that constant gain, as I'm gonna keep saying it, it really helps with transitioning sound bites from one to another. I use that in every single one of my sound bites. It, it really it adds a, a great fade in and fade out for it. So whenever you're editing sound, you can get super creative with it. Layers, many sounds like right here in this video, I think I had, yeah, 20, almost 20 layers of sound. I went all the way, all the way to layer 19 with sound, just layering them. And don't be afraid to layer multiple transitional sounds play around with them out effects the main effects i really like to use is low pass studio reverb surround reverb and then play around with the volume always 
if I were you guys, I would use constant gain a lot for fading in and fading out of clips. It, it, it really helps. And then also high pass to a uh, high pass right here. I actually used, forgot to look at that effect for you guys right here. It's kind of, it's the opposite of low pass. Low pass makes it muffled high pass kind of raises it to make it sound like of a static, a static -y radio effect. I like to use that too sometimes depending on the situation. Um, but basically that's what I do with my sound editing, my sound design. I really take my time and edit these after I do my video editing with my visuals. I like, I go back since I have everything set with my visuals, I go back and do all my sound bites, my sound editing. And that's basically what I do for every single one of my videos. So if this tutorial helped you in any kind of way, please subscribe and like, I will be trying to do a tutorial once a week and thank you for watching.